Hey, what's up guys? Tanley here, bringing you guys some more Tower of Fantasy news. As always, if you guys like what I'm doing, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as it lets the algorithm know to share this video with way more people. And we have a ton, and I mean a ton, of big news to get through today. So, after a little bit of radio silence from the Tower of Fantasy devs, they finally put out another post. Of course, it's in Chinese, so we had to translate it. Here's a very rough translation of what they said. Dear Pioneer, in order to bring everyone the best gaming experience, Tower Fantasy has added a lot of optimized content and decided to add another round of limited file testing. Since the end of the suppressor increase test, this is in reference to the last beta, we've been collecting and sorting out the suggestions and feedback of the pioneers and focused on development and improvement. We know everyone wants to play Tower Fantasy earlier, but due to the large volume of development, in order to not fail the expectation of the pioneers, the game needs more time to polish. Please understand. Now, a delay is somewhat reasonable. To start, there was no way this game was going to release in the same week as Genshin Impact's second birthday. I don't think that was at all a smart decision, and even if it is just to polish the game some more, or if it is just to avoid Genshin Impact to get more eyes, it is a very good decision to delay the game, even if by a month. I can wait a little bit longer, especially with rumors floating around and a leaked post on the App Store that shows the game coming out on November 25th. That seems a little bit more reasonable. For specific information, please continue to pay attention to the official pages. It is expected that within this year, this game will be officially launched. We will also share progress of research and discovery with you more actively. And later, they say that in order to show that they're being sincere, they gave us an entire list of all of the content the team has worked on. I am not kidding. This is exciting. So we're going to go through each of these, have a bit of a talk about them, and see what the devs have been up to. So to start, they've added more story. They've added side quests to the Crow Mine and the Wayland Snowfield. They've optimized or better written dialogue for the main story. A new weapon system. That's cool. They added two new weapons, the double gun and the shield axe. I'm assuming the double gun is like two hand welded guns. The shield axe, I don't know what that is. Uh, it, it might be a shoddy translation, who knows. They added mimic exclusive story quests. So that sounds super interesting actually. So if you don't know, mimics allow you to turn into another character in the game. So if you have an SSR mimic, of XYZ character, you can turn into that character and play as them. What this means is that you will be able to play story quests that are exclusive to these characters, similar to how in Genshin Impact, there are story quests for the characters in the world. If add an elemental shield system, don't know how that works. If there's an elemental rock, paper, scissors, Pokemon weakness, strength type system, I think that'll be sick. They've added more cutscenes to the main story. They've canceled the trading and forging function, which is interesting. So I don't know how that's going to play out. Maybe they just didn't want to work on a trading system in game. Maybe there will be one eventually. They have increased performance, optimized scene modeling, optimized character modeling, mobile image quality and performance has improved as well. They've optimized the UI, they've optimized mimic characters, they've optimized open world special effects. They've pretty much optimized everything. I can't go through this entire list because it's literally just <laughs> it's just them cleaning the game up. Trust me. It, They've cleaned it. <laughs> They've actually changed the SSR weapon icon to enhance expressiveness, so I guess it's to help distinguish the weapons a little more differently. They've added a buff and debuff icon with a special distinction. And that's about it for the first image. Yep, that's right, there's multiple. You didn't think it would end this quickly, right? Next up, they're gonna talk about combat a little more. They've optimized the combat feeling and actions. They've optimized the sound quality, so they're holding true to their promise in the previous update I made. They've added four new skills for bosses, which is interesting. And they've increased new enemy types to enrich the combat experience. They have adjusted the passives of each weapon to, quote, enhance the relevance of each weapon. So I guess it'll help make weapons distinguishable and not make one weapon inherently better than the other. Flying monsters can still be shot down and hit from the ground. When using skills, falling from a height no longer deducts health, so you don't get fall damage if you use a skill in midair. And if a skill is interrupted, the cooldown will be shorter. They've also increased and optimized target lock-on onto smaller targets, which can be helpful when you're running into small monsters. They've optimized the retrieval function. I'm assuming this means that you can send a character out to go retrieve stuff for you. They've replaced sign-in rewards. That's interesting. 
Pioneer notes are reduced in difficulty and task goals are optimized. I'm assuming this means that the quest notes are shorter and the task goals are a little more clear cut. They've optimized the interface again. They've optimized the camera system. The main interface is fully functional, so everything works. They've added a weapon grouping function, so now you can sort by certain weapons. They've added the option to add a mobile phone number to bind event rewards. I don't know what that means, but that's a good sign because it makes it sound like we don't actually need a phone number to get in the game. <laughs> I don't know. Add achievements related to the peak league. I'm assuming this is in reference to the PvP. So they're going to be adding achievements if you reach the highest league in PvP. So that's cool. Pioneer notes are unlocked according to the player level. I would imagine that this just means quests are level locked. Added the function of convening guild members. That's interesting because this means that you can bring all of your guild members in one place. I don't know if this means you could just TP them somewhere or if you can just... I don't know, but... The idea of number one, there are guilds in the game, confirmed 100%, great. And number two, that you can bring them all somewhere, that's pretty interesting. Maybe it has to do with the Dreamland. If you don't know what the Dreamland is, it's the home housing system for players. Does that have to do with it, or is this just some other sequence in the game? All right, and here are the final patch notes. They've added large-scale puzzle-solving gameplay in the open world. They've added four medium-sized puzzle-solving games. They've optimized the background music performance, and they re-recorded the music as part of this process. They've optimized the AI of the wild animals, and they've adjusted their attack and line of sight. Four world gravity ball gameplay optimization. I have no clue what that means. Maybe they added soccer to the game. That'd be awesome. New box opening gameplay in the open world. Don't know what that means. Maybe they've changed how the gotcha system works. And NPCs will have speech bubbles above their heads. That's kind of nice. A little bit of quality of life here. Just some nice little stuff that's being added. For new players, the guiding system has been optimized. And lastly, they've optimized server performance, added a new technology to optimize performance and compatibility of mobile users. They've used new technology to increase the performance of the desktop version. They've added better networking to have better synchronization between players. And they've optimized the glider mechanics. So everything seems to be looking out very great for this game so far. But what are your favorite additions or updates to the game so far? Everything looks promising. A slight delay is all right. But as things stand, it's not that bad. It's only an extra month. And I think that the developers definitely need this time to polish and clean up the game. If they were able to make this much progress after a beta that ended literally a month ago, imagine how much more they could make in another month. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. Tell me guys what you think in the comment section down below. I'd be sure to read and respond. That's going to be it for today's video, everyone. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I am out. See ya.